And she asked him, the policeman friend of hers, to make sure, and I think she had the best intentions, to ask him to go over and check on me this one particular day. And I don't remember why. I don't know what was different about that day or why I needed checking on that day. Or maybe he just said that she said that. I really don't know. I, I never asked her. One thing you have to understand, my mother was in denial most of my life about most everything. Um, so anyway, he did come over. And immediately, immediately upon him coming in uh, to the apartment, and he just came in, he didn't knock or anything. But I thought it was okay. I don't remember his name. I remember his first name, but I don't remember anything else about him. I remember him. What I remember is him asking me to get him something to drink. And when I came back into the room, he was exposing himself. And even at that young age, I knew what was going on. I knew what was expected of me. And I immediately capitulated. I live with shame from that. An awful shame. And I've carried it with me my entire adult life. That shame. Should I really carry shame about something I did as a little bitty kid? After what a, you know. The, I know in here. I know. That. And if someone else told me the same story, I would go, you need to let that go. You were too little. You didn't know what you were doing. You'd been taught that love was this twisted thing, so you thought you were showing love. Which is, is what I thought. And that was kind of the basis for the rest of my life. When I was 14 years old, I ran away from home. My father had got out of jail years before. He continued the abuse and picked back up again. And when I was 14 years old, my I came in from outside. I'd been out with my friends, out playing or something. I don't recall. I, but what I remember is I came in the house and I had grown. I'd shot up. I'd always been kind of a puny little kid, this little mousy kid afraid of his own shadow. I thought I was Christopher Robin as a kid. Um, really, I, despite all that sexual stuff, I was very innocent in so many other ways about the world and most of my young life. Anyway, I luckily I, I shot up in height and weight. <laughs> And at 14, I walked into the house and my father was choking my mother, and I attacked him. I'd never dreamt of putting a hand on my father, ever in my whole life. Oh, I guess I thought about it, but knew that he'd kill me if I did. And at that moment, I didn't care. I jumped on him. I choked him. I put my hand around his neck, and I said, you touch her again, and I'll kill you. And I could see fear in his eye, and that scared me. Isn't that odd? I'd never seen fear in that man's eyes. All I'd ever seen was hatred. And I saw fear and I pitied him. I pitied him in that moment. I really did. I felt bad that I had made him feel that way. But I knew I had to leave then. My mother's crying, going, don't leave. And he's going, let the little, let him go. And, um, I was raised in California. We were living in Texas at the time. So I ran away back to California. I went to San Francisco, which is where we spent most weekends when I was a kid. We lived in Petaluma and we would travel to San Francisco. So I knew the city. And I knew my father always said it was full of freaks. And I thought, what a perfect place for a freak like me. And it was. I made a lot of friends on the streets. 
I was cold a lot, sleeping outside. And sometimes I let my... I, let, I made the bad, wrong decision sometimes, just so I could sleep indoors and have a warm meal. I'm justifying it, I guess. That's who I was. So, at 15, I was going to bars, adult bars, right? Uh, and one night, this guy says, do you see that guy over there in the wheelchair? And I looked over and I saw him. He said, he's a Catholic priest. He was hit by a car while going to his ordination. So he wasn't actually a Catholic priest. He was going to become ordinated and a Mack truck hit him actually. And he killed another priest and messed him up real bad. He said he needs someone young and healthy to help take care of him, to cook his meals, to clean up and just help him out. I was freezing. It was cold. I don't know if you've ever been in San Francisco at night and it's cold, <laughs> and especially down on the pier, um, which is where most of us were, uh, we kids of the streets. So I met him, I talked to him. He had an apartment in San Francisco. Back then people could afford apartments in San Francisco. I hear it's much different now. Uh, he was moving to a mountain in Northern California to do his rehab. He bought a home. He got a bunch of money in a settlement from the car accident, and he bought a home. And he wanted me to go with him and be his black caretaker. No strings attached. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've heard no strings attached. They were ropes. So, um, two years of him calling me the most horrendous names, of treating me like trash, um, and I guess it made him feel better about his unrealized self. This is just kind of just pouring out and I'm putting this, it's so weird to be doing this. And I'm doing this now I did this before. I have a lot of recordings from when someone very special to me died and I thought I would die too. And so I had no one else around me so I just recorded it. I thought if I talk to this machine it'll be like someone else is there and that's what I'm doing now. You are my mirror, my sounding board. So I'm kind of messed up. Most of the time, I'm pretty happy and upbeat, but that has taken years of practice. I have worked at being a cheerful, positive, happy person, and that's who I want to be. But a lot of time, I'm very sad. <laughs> And so I'll put on a sweater of happiness, right? I try to cover it up and try to just get on with the day. And it works. Most of the time it works. Yesterday I watched someone else do a video. They were going through a breakup and it about broke my heart to see them hurting the way they were hurting. But I also realized that it was cathartic for them and necessary for them to release that. And I've never really released this. So I think that's all for now. I do feel I do feel that I've said enough for now. 
I'm just a scar tissue person. Thank you all so much. I appreciate this more than I can tell you. If you want to give it a thumbs down, I understand. I really understand. Um, if you don't want to leave a comment, if you want to unsubscribe from this channel, I get that too. I do. I don't know what else to say, um, so I'm not going to say any more. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I do appreciate you watching this, if you've watched this. If you haven't, I must stop talking because I'm talking to myself now. Okay. Goodbye. So just another thanks to you all. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. Now, let's make some soap. Okay? Thank you. Goodbye.